Many times geologists in the field will look for clues to mysteries uh, in the rock, and I found one here. So the first thing a geologist will do is try to understand what it is that we're looking at. What we've got here is an unusual pattern, an unusual type of rock that's of a different character than most of the rock around it. I'm standing here on the eastern flank of the Sierra Nevadas, which I know is contains a lot of igneous and volcanic rocks. And if I look at these rocks, I can see they're made up of large crystals. And those crystals are interlocked together, making this most likely an igneous rock. If I look very closely at this piece, it's also made up of crystals that interlock closely together, although they're very much smaller and also have a different composition. I can tell that because of the light versus dark. This rock appears to be about half light and half dark. And if I look closely at the types of minerals that I see in this rock, I find that I'm finding minerals such as plagioclase feldspar, micas like biotite, some darker minerals that may be pyroxenes or amphiboles. So most likely this would be called a diorite. Now if I look at this particular piece of rock, I find that the number of dark minerals is much higher. So the question becomes, how did this rock form? It most likely formed of an igneous melt that had a composition that was high in iron and magnesium because of the amounts of iron and magnesium in the minerals within the rock. But the interesting thing about this is, look at the relationship. It looks as though this tiny piece is within this bigger piece, that this is encapsulating this great piece of rock. But the pieces are very small. That means they cooled very quickly. These had to have cooled very slowly. If these cooled very quickly, maybe they erupted at the surface. Maybe this is an andesite. And maybe those pieces were somehow reincorporated into a hot and melted rock that then cooled and formed these coarse crystals. The problem with that theory is I can actually see large crystals within this block that are similar to this rock. So what that tells me is, most likely, that these rocks cooled together and that these were quenched somehow and cooled more quickly within the same kind of melt. It tells me a little bit about what was happening in the deep magma reservoir when this whole rock was cooled. So I've learned something new about this rock that I've never seen before. If you actually know what the story of this rock is, let us know.